Mr. Matunjo, let me start with you. Your understanding of what is behind what we saw in, 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 at Lone Min today and yesterday. I can only talk about what I heard about today. As far as we heard is that the workers went and present a memorandum, whether it was verbally or a written document, I don't know. And the issues that we learned about is that one is the carrying of weapons at the workplace, guns by NUM members, which our members complained about, which management hasn't done anything about it. And secondly, is the issue of the recognition agreement that lapsed last year, 2012, whereby it was for NUM, Solidarity, and UASA. And therefore, the workers are asking why is still NUM enjoying all the rights at the workplace, whereas they are no longer 50 plus one in terms of their then agreement sign. Mr. Sogwana, your understanding of the situation there? Let me start by saying that we would like to pass our condolences to the families of those three people who died, uh, the former organizer of AMCO, as well as the two twins were killed at their flats and call upon people at that mine to be calm, to allow the police to do their work. Our understanding is that there have been debates. ANM has been informed that it does no longer enjoy the majority it used to enjoy. Processes, of course, will be debated on the table, not on the mountain. We don't believe that the, 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 the reasons people are at the mountain because of the ANM benefits. I have been briefed just now before I came in to the fact that, yes, there has been a demand put up by those strikers at, at, at the Gopi. They are demanding 22% wage increase. They are demanding the removal of NOM or the closure of NOM offices. Okay, let's, let's park the wage demands for, for, for a second Sizukwan, and talk about the issue of recognition. Now, if AMCO, for argument's sake, is the majority union, why do we have to wait for processes? In other words, do people have to die? Why can't the NUM just say, well, now that AMCO is the majority union, let's vacate the offices for peace's sake, if anything? No, no, no. It is not supposed to be like that. Remember, we have signed just recently, uh, we have signed a, a, a peaceful agreement that outlines processes to follow in those cases. It defines as to what should happen uh, in, in cases like that. And we have both signed, me and Mr. Matunjwa signed that document. It does not have to be AMCO members demanding NUM to leave. It is the company that has to engage NUM to say, and like any other agreement, there will be an exit procedure of saying, when you have lost membership, what must happen? Nobody has to die just because of recognition. Mr. Matunjwa, you part your signatory to this arrangement? Yes, the, the peace frame agreement doesn't suggest that the company should recognize a union which is not uh, represented in terms of the collective agreement. NUM, its agreement lapsed last year, so therefore they're not supposed to enjoy any right. Remember that 50 plus one was set up by NUM at the workplace, so therefore they had to comply with the very same agreement. So it's for the employer to tell NUM that we are no longer a representative trade union. Until such time, a majority union, which is AMCO and the employer, set the new threshold, which is what we currently busy. So it's long overdue. NUM shouldn't be even receiving subscription in that mine, in, according to its agreement that it has signed. So the, the, the ball is back in your court, Mr. Zorro. I, 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 uh, I found this very, very disturbing because... The reason we signed that accord was to ensure that we can open avenues in dealing with the issues Mr. Matunjwa is referring to. It is clear as to what must happen in the in event there are such a, a dispute. Let me say that there are two forms of agreement a union enjoys. There will be rights as an organization that you have got members, but you don't reach the, 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 the percentage to represent them in negotiations. You still will have offices. You still have interaction with the employer in as far as making sure that those members who belong to you, you still represent. So I don't understand, and I, I, and I would be happy if, if we can stick to the spirit of the agreement and follow it to the letter. If the employer has reneged on the agreement, as Natunja is alleging, 
It is not the duty of AMCO members to demand that NUM should leave offices or blood to spill. It is to make sure that we follow the same forum. I would be happy Matunja can bind himself to say, we have to make sure that we meet under the auspices of the Minister of DMR and Minister of Labor, but, so that we can outline these things. But aren't you worried that people may be killed in your name? I'm not for a second suggesting um, that we don't know who, um, um, who killed Mawetu, and it's for the police to investigate that. But aren't you worried as a leader that people are or may be killed in your name and perhaps the best thing to do under the circumstances is to say let's forget about processes let's do that which will guarantee or at least um, will give us will give us some peace if 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 the point you are driving mr mboko is for nm to vacate offices remember these offices are rise and trend in the 1994 labor relations act an act we fought for as we speak to you now we have don't have offices in Imbala. The same method was used. Our offices were locked. We don't have offices in some of the Anglo, uh, Anglo Platinum mines. The same process, which I believe is a bit unfair. I don't think we need to say whether NUM should not vacate offices. There's no board in this world, in this country, where a right to, to put his views the manner he wants. We have to follow the procedures. Simple. We have agreed that where AMCO believes that it, the company is, de is delaying processes of dealing with recognition. What forum to follow? Mr. Matunjo, can't yeah. you just be patient, follow the processes, and uh, speak to your members and say to them, let's wait a little, the processes get clearly defined, instead of like, uh, allowing the situation that is a bit of chaotic we'll, at the moment, and that may lead to even no, we'll, uh, more losses of No, lives. we never allowed any situation. I, I don't know why should management and NUM play very dumb experienced union like NUM. Zek, Zulu Antracite Colliery. We had offices there, NUM became a majority. Then our agreement was terminated. There was no war. BHP Billetin. We, we once have offices in BHP Billetin. NUM raised the threshold into a level where we are not able to get it. We vacated the offices. What is it now in other mines where NUM has lost its majoritism and is difficult to agree to the terms. Very briefly, Mr. Zogwana, uh, what are you prepared uh, to do uh, we are prepared to as meet. a leader to say, let's resolve the situation? What are you prepared to say I'm, to your members? What are you prepared to do as a leader? I'm prepared, as I'm saying now, that all NUM members refrain from violence as you have done. Don't go to AMCO offices and demand their closure, even because there are many places where AMCO is minority. I don't want to see NUM members going there and say close AMCO um, because that is the business of management and AMCO. The same should apply that no party has a right to impose himself. If there are issues, they are between the employer and, and, and the referred union. As long as we can stop this thing of believing that our, our, our energy must be towards the union more than the employer who is our class enemy. Mr. Matunja, what are you prepared to do as a leader? What are you prepared to say to your members? Which, which may put an end to what we see. We are simply saying people must act within the ambit of the law. They mustn't do anything that will result in loss of life. And also, we as leaders in this studio, we must walk the talk. This afternoon, I've been approached by our members from Anglo, uh, Anglo Ashanti, saying that there are 10 people who have been allocated in the hostel to assassinate our members. This matter has been escalated uh, to management, but they are doing nothing about those things. So how can we say peace on the studio, but down there, there are war rooms where people are meeting, I mean, against to assassinate our members? I just want to briefly Mr. respond Mr. to Mr. the assassination Mr. issue. I can assure you that if we can go to Anglo Gold Ashanti, you won't find a single member of AMC who have been attacked by any member. But we can go to an Anglo Gold Farris West Hospital. You will find NUM members who have been attacked by AMCO members. But the point of it is this, that as leaders, we should act responsible. Tomorrow I'm waiting for the secretary of, 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 of NACTO to confirm a meeting between NUM and NACTO, where Corsacon, all of us can be able to go, not only to talk in the studio, to go to our members and say that, look, it can never be right. No party must die for membership. Will you honor that meeting? 
AMCO will honor any meeting, as I'm saying right now. AMCO, when reports anything about NUM members, they are not arrested. We wrote a letter to the Minister of Police, Natim Tetwa, telling him about all the atrocities, the intimidation that are direct towards AMCO members, nothing. But when NUM raise issues against our members, we can check each and every province, you'll find our members in jail. Let's walk the talk. Gentlemen, thanks to both of Thank you. Thank you very much. Fortunately, we don't have time. Well, Thank you. Yeah, Boba.